This is my programming teacher, or as I like to call him, the octopus guy. What makes him unique is that he would sometimes make an app decoding task, where he would make a program, turn it into an app, and upload it. We would then have to use the app and try to recreate it. All seems well in this system, but there's just one small issue. I am kinda good at programming, so this man, with his superman clothes on, would usually create extra apps for me to recreate so the other guys would have an advantage, like, bruh. I knew I had to get my revenge, and I had the perfect idea. You see, I've always had an idea to try and make a game using only code, and if I could turn it into an app like he did, I could pull the ultimate Uno reverse card prank and get him to recreate a task much harder than anything he ever gave us. So, I got to work. The first thing I had to do was figure out the gameplay. Alright y'all, we're in. Now, for this prank, I wanna make a shooter game. Basically, the game will have a line, and behind the line, the player will stand. And you can either move it left or right, or shoot. And there will be enemies that will slowly approach the player, which it will have to shoot or else the player dies. Now, as far as I know, there is no way to give a life input or have a time system to move the enemies in this program. So, I'll be using some sort of refreshing slash cycle system. Basically, the code will generate the current state of the game to which the player can input the action they wanna do. Once they hit enter, the code will regenerate the game, but the enemies will move one step closer to the player and the action the player inputs will be registered and executed. So, after I designed the layout, I got to work on the first step player movement. Okay, so this code will make the player move left if A is inputted and move right if D is inputted. The way it works is I use the variable to determine where the player is and the game will generate empty space before generating the player to put it in the right position. And it works! I promise it'll run way smoother once it's an app. With movement done, I got around to enemy generation. I just told the code that generates the player, like all good programmers do before this thing was created. Okay, so the enemy has existed, but this time, instead of one enemy, it's a whole array. I used a special randomizer system for this. I swear I made this before, but I'm an idiot so I had to look up how to make it for the fourth time. Yes, fourth time. Problem is, I don't think the player can fend off this many enemies. So my idea is to make the enemies spawn every 3 spaces. The best way to make it work is to make it so the array that generates the enemies only generates a random number every 3 indexes. And if it's not a random number, it'll be 0, which I've programmed to not spawn enemies. Oh, this took so long and I'm not even in the hard part yet. But, before this monumental, ultimate hard part which I'm over dramatizing for attention, we need to make the enemies move. Currently, only the player moves every cycle, so my idea is, every cycle, the array will shift all the indexes by minus one, because the first index is actually the one closest to the player. Okay, so, enemy moving is done. Basically, this code makes it so each index of the enemy array will transform into the value of the index after it, and the last index, which has no index to transform to, will do that spawning every 3 seconds code thing. So the game is now infinite. Now, currently once the enemy reaches the line, it disappears. We can't half that, can we? We need to dead. We have to detect if the index that reaches the line is an enemy or a blank space. Because why would the player die to the enemy? Of course only the blank space can kill it. I'm kidding, that was terrible. Okay, so. Why do I keep saying okay, so? Uh, I need another phrase. Archer consequently. We have the death system. I figured this game was too hard, so I gave the player three lives. There's still nothing you can do to stop the enemies, so we need to figure that out. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the hard part, the shooting system. You see, the way I want this to work is, the player can only shoot the enemy closest to it, cause that's all I can think of that I can actually program. It's rather ironic that the heroes fall easier to force in this triumph, a symbolism of the difficulties of becoming a true savior within this cruel world. Atcha, consequently, I need to make the player shoot, so we'll use S as our control. Just to clarify, you can only have one input at a time, you can't just do this. So now, I need a system to detect which index of the enemy array is the enemy closest to the player and then detect if the player's position when shooting matches with said enemy's position. And the way I'll do that is, I'll use a variable that I'll call nearest, which starts off as the index of the closest enemy. Then, every cycle, nearest reduces by 1 to follow the enemy. But, if the enemy reaches the line, the player loses her life and nearest will be pushed 3 steps forward to lock into the next enemy. Then, we can use this code which will detect if the player's position is equal to the position of the index in the enemy array that equals to nearest. If you're confused about all that, be glad you're not my programming teacher. Unless you are, then sorry about this whole thing. Moving forward, now we need to make it so when the player shoots, the enemy actually
actually die. This part's actually quite simple. I just turn the value of that enemy's index into zero, which removes it. And then, Nerus gets moved three steps forward to lock into the next enemy. Hey, that sounds familiar. Problem is, it just doesn't work. Like, I tried many solutions, adjusting every value and working very hard to debug this code. Not even ChatGPT 4.0 itself can solve my code. And I tried it twice. Then I kinda yeeted one part of the code a little higher and it works. Programming is so fun in it, fellas. I have to say, I am very pleased with the mind to pull this off. I've had this idea wandering about my mind for ages and now I get to use it to a night revenge upon the octopus guy. Alright now, we need to finish things up. First thing on the agenda of finishing this off is the scoring system. I made a score variable that connects to the shooting code, and I even made it so every 5 kills you get, you gain an extra life. Then I added a reset function which prompted an idea to add a high score function. And lastly, I added a starting menu. Right, done, holy cops dude this took ages. Oh, dude, I hope the octopus guy doesn't explode trying to remake this. With the code finished, it's time to make it into an app. At first, I thought I won't show this part, but it took such a long time. And I nearly gave my friends viruses trying to test the app. But once it's done, I sent it to the octopus guy, and the show was on. Dear Octopus Guy, do you remember when you gave us those tasks? Ones where we must recreate an app you've created? Yes, why? Remember how you gave me extra? Haha. -ha. Well, just so you know, I've worked for days now, and today I'll show you the story of my revenge. I'm scared. Be sure to record. <laughs> okay, so can I start now? No way! <laughs> Hang on. Okay, okay. So, no, oh, that's okay. I need to. Okay. Did you just uh, made this with one prompt and ChatGPT? No. First of all, this game is impossible. <laughs> Second of all, can you do this? No. Okay. No. Yeah. Ah! Yep. Okay. 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 Oh, it's random. Oh, every time I uh, restart, can I press anything? Listen, I definitely can't do this in one sitting, right? And you know that. <laughs> and you know that. Mm -mm. Hang on. No, it's not. Can't. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, I can't. <laughs> okay, I admit my defeat. Yeah, no, 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 I gave up. I gave up. No, no, no I can't. <laughs> Thank you, though. This is very, very interesting. Uh, yes, I admit Agent is far more superior than me in coding. <laughs> you know, um, this is very good for you to experience C Sharp like this, to explore more. Yes. I, I I was very proud of you, of course, of course, as a programming teacher. <laughs> okay. Looking back at those words, I've realized that perhaps revenge isn't always the answer. Maybe those extra tasks aren't evil obstacles, but rather remind us that I am special. And both of us have made our horizons of impact something truly incredible. Thank you for watching!